Hi guys, EJ here from Backbeat. So on this project here, we're going to um, look at a typical situation. We've had a lot of conversations about doing neck resets and stuff like that and repairing necks. But one of the classic problems that Hoffners have is right here on the piece that goes over the body. Um, a lot of times that'll get a slight, uh, I'm going to say warp up. And it's, it's really hard to get rid of that, and it makes it impossible. You have to keep your action high to play. And even if you're gonna do a neck reset, nobody wants to have a neck reset and still have that warp on the end. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to take a club base that I have, it's a 65, that has had that problem for a while. And I'm gonna inject some steam into the neck here, and I'm gonna slowly pull this down. A lot of what I need to do to prep for this, we've gone over in other videos, so I'm just gonna kinda quickly get to the actual steaming of it, and then um, just show you the clamping, and then afterwards we'll, we'll uh, review how, what the results were. So um, let's get it over to the bench and give it a shot. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is go back to my diagrams here, my usual diagrams, and kind of explain what we're doing here. Here's your typical Hoffner neck, should be nice and straight. This piece, the extension that comes out over the body, is the piece that we're dealing with on this guy today. Now, in all the other videos, we talked about this coming loose and maybe coming up. But in some cases, like on this club, it's not loose. We have the natural curve from time. And no matter what we do, if we reset the neck, it'll always have that up curve on it. So what I'm gonna attempt to do with this one is here's my new diagram. Here's what we're dealing with. We have a neck that has, and this is quite exaggerated, an upward curl. And I'm going to do what I've warned about on the steaming of the neck not to do, I'm going to do on this one. And what that is, is I'm going to pull the 17th fret and I'm going to drill down partial into here. And I am going to deliberately put steam near the joint here where all this glue is. We're not going to loosen the neck. We're going to just put some hot steam right around this area. And when I've had enough steam there, I'll know because I'll be able to move this slightly. And then I will um, very carefully, I've applied this steel bar. Now this is the bar I use for leveling frets and clamped it. And I have it, as you can see right now, absolutely straight. Now, Here's another shot I wanted to show you right now as it's clamped. You can see that it's quite straight. I think what's going on right here where we took the fret out is a little bit of a up curve. And as I said, I, I would expect that and I can delicately file that down. I wanted to give you a shot from this side. Looks pretty good so far. Okay guys, so I took the clamp off and it's dried now for two or three days and um, it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with what happened here and, and the results. 
and I wanted to go over this with you in a little more detail because I know it's very hard to film or show um, what I'm dealing with here so I thought I would just kind of review this ever so much with you a little bit here and um, I think the best thing for me to do is to go back to my handy drawings here so let me flip over to the drawing here for a second okay so back to my drawings here I think this might be an easier way to explain this um, so you know here's the fretboard on this base and right about here just after where the truss rod ends is where the 17th fret is that we've spoken about and right here where it goes over the body it had a warp upwards which you know it never allowed me to be able to get the action low enough you can see it was getting pretty high here and if I got too far up the neck this over here would start to buzz so what we're looking for is you know we want a nice straight neck we want the action to be right about where it should be here on the 12th fret the 330 seconds that we spoke about and um, what I've done here is by um, steaming this area right in here I was able to soften this enough to be able to pull this down so what I'm dealing with now is I have the neck here and I've pulled this down and so what looks like a lump right here now which is what I was expecting is a lot easier to deal with than um, you know I think the classic way to fix something like this in the past would be you know we would pull the frets out and we would sand all this down and when you have a base that has this vintage trim on it and I want to maintain it I didn't want it to be renewed and replaced in brand new white thick or sanding this down so it was really thin right down through here um, so again right here is the area I'm, we're going to be talking about right now so I thought that this would be a little interesting way to fix this um, issue so on this drawing what I've done is to explain what I see now now I've over exaggerated this and again this would be this right here is I'm going to take where it's humped up a little from me putting this back now keep in mind I didn't force anything here I didn't break open any of the seams or anything I just softened all the glue in this area and was able to put this back where it used to be it seemed to do it so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to level this on the fretboard here, right here, this hump. I'm going to lay this down. But when I use my tool, my fret leveler, and you know, that's my big Stumac tool here with the sandpaper on it. And you lay it on the frets and we do a um, leveling and then a recrowning. That's great, except for because this was up in the air for so long, the frets down here have a lot of meat on them. They've never really been played. And I can see, you know, I've tried to indicate here that these have been leveled once before. They've been played. So what I need to do is I need to take some of this wood out of here. And then I'm going to bring these frets down to about this level. And I'm going to do that very carefully because we only have really one shot at that to get that correct. Anyway, that's where we're at with this so far it's um, working and the one thing I do want to mention is that when this neck was put on years ago it was put on with type on glue now I'm saying that because if this was the original hide glue or if it was put on with hide glue when I was steaming this area I think this may have let loose so the type on which um, holds much better than hide um, helped me in this instance there are times when you want to use hide glue down here but I needed to be able to use this to pull it down and use a lot of heat right in this area steam okay let's move on to the next thing okay before I start sanding anything down here or I should say filing any wood in here or try to knock these frets down a little bit so that I can do a um, fret level on this base I needed to be able to take the area where the truss rod can control and that's from here to here and adjust this 
Now this base has a history. I bought this in Hawaii and when I bought it the neck was literally hanging off of it and it has seen a lot of moisture and it took a lot of conditioning and a lot of work over the years for me to get this back to normal. So when I go in here to adjust the, um, the truss rod, which is right in here, let me see if I can get that lit up, show you guys, it's your standard truss rod, but it too had a lot of crud in it and being in a high humidity area, there was some rust around where the rod went into itself and I wasn't really able to get it a good adjustment and it was getting really hard and it really wasn't doing anything and I've done that before in the past and snapped these right off so as soon as it felt like it didn't want to move anymore and it really wasn't pulling the neck back like it should be I took it apart so that leads me to another one of my drawings here this is what I was dealing with we have the nut on the threaded rod and it goes inside a tube and that is inside the neck so what I what I typically will do when it feels like it's just not being reactive is I'll take that nut off and the first thing I want to show you is uh, one of the giveaways to me is when there's a lot of threaded rod sticking out that something is really not working it's being over tightened so what I'll do is I'll take that nut off of there and then I'll put the guitar in one of the guitar stands and I'll put a drop of that sewing machine oil that we've talked about and I'll and I also take a little uh, pick and I'll get any of the crud or dirt and everything around that rod because what happens is I could see like a, a mild rust around here and this basically rusted itself to that sounds awful but it wasn't that bad but it's enough so that it isn't doing its job this rod needs to be able to move inside this outer casing so what I do once I clean that out and I put um, the lubricant on there and be very careful when you put oil around here don't get it in the wood around the neck that's the worst thing to make that wood up there in this area up here should not get all oily and soaked you want to just put a little drop of oil right in there so and then keep the guitar vertical for overnight maybe do that for a couple days one drop just one drop a little oil let it work its way down in there and then clean it up you know once you a couple days go by and all that crud is loose and everything I'm pretty sure by then you've had it loosened up now as I mentioned there was a lot of thread here so what I do is I make this little spacer and I make it slightly smaller than the tube and I make sure that it's drilled out larger than the thread because we don't want it to bind and once I have that I can put it back in with the nut back on there and I have better control over adjusting the neck this is what it looks like when I put it back together not a whole lot of rod it's sticking farther out you can see that now and it now works when I turn that and put this on here and look down the neck I can actually see I can see what it's doing it, before I was really really leaning on that and it wasn't doing anything and I was absolutely certain that that would snap if I had kept going so anyway that's really important to get this part of the neck so that it works and it's adjustable now we'll get back on to this issue here
Okay, I wanted to give you a close-up look of what I've done here. I've reinstalled the frat after I filed down uh, just a little bit with a small micro file where we needed to take the wood down. I put the fret back in, pressed it in using my, my 7.25 press, tapping it lightly with a hammer. Checked it out, was slightly high. I went over the frets with blue marker and then I started to level using my level tool sanded the frets. was extremely high up here because of never being used and of the warp. So in this area here, I used my um, file just to do some spot work up in here, give it a little head start to get it down lower. Once um, we were down, I used my Z file. It's a special file for crowning frets. I think you can see it there. It's two different sizes and it's real easy. It helps you to do both sides at once. Got them all looking really nice. Then I take a 320 paper and I go over the entire neck with it until I can see that any of the major grooves are gone from any of the sanding or the files. And then I finish it up with a 600 paper. And a used 600 paper is even finer, you know, so I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, if you have an older sheet that's still got some grain to it, that's great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum this up, clean it, and um, put some oil on here, fret oil, um, neck oil, I'm sorry. And um, we're going to restring it and see if we can play up in these high areas now. Let's see how it goes. My issue of the warped end of the neck and the taller frets has now been resolved. And um, I'm real happy with the outcome here. Um, let me show you the entire guitar. You know, we um, polished up the frets, recrowned them, leveled them, and um, everything has been replaced. Everything is in good shape. I was able to knock some of the wood off the top of this area. I'm, I'm really happy with the results and I can play up there now. Um, I'll see if I can show you how that works. But um, I think it's a success. I'm going to try to give you a, a nice shot of the uh, string height and the neck here. Let me see if I can dial this in. I don't know if you can see that there. At the same time, I wanted to, uh, I'm not going to plug this into an amp because I just wanted to. I never could play up there before. Okay, well, um, that's the end of this project. Um, I think it came out really well. I'm happy with it. Uh, this guitar has seen a lot of use and had a lot of issues and it's pretty much right where it needs to be right now. One of the things I want to mention to you guys is that, you know, with all the vintage basses that I mess with, Hofners, that um, a lot of times, you know, people will say, oh, this guitar needs a neck reset or, or, you know, it needs some major work. Other than actual cracks or things breaking off, there's really only three ways a neck on a Hofner can appear warped or be warped. And that is um, like if this joint back here with the high glue gives up and the neck starts to come forward, the action gets high, it definitely needs a reset. But there's also times when that isn't the issue and it's the truss rod up here near the top where the um, the splined part goes into, the threaded part goes into the rod, gets rusted right there, and it doesn't work anymore, and it has to be freed up. And if, if you keep pulling on that and it doesn't do anything, then um, that's probably the reason you can't get the neck to come back. And the third one was exactly what we did on this base. It's right in here. The part that isn't controlled by the truss rod warps up. And just so you know, this guitar actually had all three of those issues. So I'm really happy that that was straightened out.
with this. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, we'll get on to the next one. Got a few more coming up soon. See ya. Bye.